if we change material types and go into, say, biphase manufacture, both of these are percussion techniques. That was percussion. And, say, produce a big biphase uh, by percussion. Now, see, technically, this flake is twice as long as it is wide, but it's not a blade because the scars on dorsal surface are in no, well, no, no way parallel to the long axis. They run all which different ways. So this definition of flakes and blades are important. Platform preparation, once again, one of the four attributes that have to be maintained all the time is important. By grinding down the edge, you can produce the flakes. If you didn't grind the edge, the platform collapses and you cannot predict the uh, outcome. Now, this may appear to be a haphazard situation, just kind of pounding around on the edge, and you're real lucky that things come off, but that's not quite the case. There are no more natural plat platforms left on this biphase, so we're having to create our own. This is direct freehand percussion. This does occur in uh, Australia, not on obsidian mainly, but uh, I've seen it for in Queensland with some very nice big bifaces uh, on chirts uh, for axe blanks. You see the same thing going on. But it is, exemplifies uh, direct freehand percussion using a hammer stone. Also, if you read in the literature, it tells you you cannot thin down a biface with a hammer stone. You must uh, switch to a baton. We'll just kind of ignore that and go on about our business here. So now, we're placed with this flat surface here. And once again, it's one of those sneak up on it locations. You, if I hit it right here, I can take off a little bit, but pretty soon it starts to hinge. And if I keep chewing that back, I'm going to have a mess on that edge. So what you have to do is you have to start from the tip, move the margin in a little bit, and catch it right here on that. And we'll run this ridge. And by running the ridge, we got off a little bit of it. You start on the other side, prepare a platform. We got a little bit more of it. And you keep playing this game. Uh, if you want to do some really fancy stuff, you could start from the other margin. Right. We'll try it. I don't know if I can shoot it all the way across there, but you can see this ridge. We'll isolate it, and it'll give you a good example, if it works, of predicting the where it's going to go. Platform preparation is crucial. went across, but not quite far enough to catch that. But we might be able to catch it up here. Once again, we got close, but so you keep. This is the, uh, it's, it's an interesting concept of uh, the mental template. You see, there is no mental template in terms of the end product. It's a mental template in terms of the battle. Okay, we won that little, that little war of getting that off, but the battle of making a thin biface is yet to be won. So you keep going through this process of making the biface thin. Platform preparation is absolutely a must at this stage. You can't possibly thin this down by guesswork and on the platforms. You have to prepare them, which is what I'm doing now. By a lot of people's uh, interpretation, this little step fracturing that occurs on the opposite margin is youth, and you frequently have little striations in there to 
you know, bolster their argument. Then you grind it this way, and boy, you get a lot of things, you know, but it's platform preparation. And we'll systematically come down this and bend down. that side and we'll come back and pick up this uh, little flake in between there. Now, if we take off any more mass off of this bottom side, we're going to end up with a bent, you know, like a boomerang type biface. So you have to go back to the other face, set up the platforms. Once again, the sound change on that last flake. Sound's really important. It gets real high and it starts to drop. And when it starts to drop, you're in trouble. From now on, the, the uh, same attribute that makes obsidian easy to flake now becomes your enemy because from now on, the amount of force that I need to get the flake off properly is enough force to break the biface. So if you're for, uh, if you're platform, surface topography, striking angle, and amount of force are not just exactly right, she breaks in half. So you have to be real careful. And if I had a, a 10 cent piece for every biface I've broken, I could retire. And it's a good thing that the prehistoric inhabitants broke them or we wouldn't have good information. Now you can play this thinning game uh, for quite a while down the line, but after a while, it's kind of like a contest between you and the rock, and frequently the rock wins. So this is, uh, if you're into good biface manufacture, you don't leave the cortex on the stone. See, see, we'll have to get that off. There's part of it, and there's the other part. Sound getting higher. Kind of like gold coins. It's a nice sound. Now, if you're watching the debitage of the waste fall on the floor, you're also watching a lot of scrapers being manufactured because the flakes fall on the floor, they hit against other flakes and whatnot, and they get it damaged edges. So, without polish, wear pattern analysis is in trouble. Now, at this stage of the game, you're running into a problem with trying to thin from the base. You have to dampen the blow, because if you don't, you'll break it through end shock. The other end will fly off because the force that's loaded into the stone has nowhere to go at the other end, turns back on itself and breaks. All of these things are constant factors. Now here's a classic example of where major mistakes can be made. Not to say that I won't, but this area, there's a lump right here that I wish to get off that you can see. And there was a lip, so the angle wasn't right on the edge of the stone. If I were to load the force into there, it would have hinged and I would have had a bigger mess. So you set the platform to the same face. You want the flake to come off instead of the opposite face and then come back and set it up. Well, you can sneak up on it from the sides or whatever, but then it comes off without any trouble. If you don't do that, you end up with a big mess. And like I say, we can play this game of thinning this biface down until it breaks. And then, as Don Crabtree used to say, it's finished. You don't have to worry about it anymore. take another series off of it.
hear the change in the sound again. Uh, the platform collapsed, see? I didn't set it up properly. That creates big problems at this stage. But flint napping demonstration is like a good movie, you know, it's got to have a little suspense in it. So, and you can come back to sneak up on it and get it. Now, there's a big hinge right here. You have to get that from the other side. This is probably one of the major reasons why bifaces break, and it breaks with a very predictable fracture called perverse fracture. And it's always, without exception, a manufacturing error. Hopefully I won't do it, but if I do, you'll see a classic example of it. Start from the tip. Because I'm weakening this area, I'm going to leave it as an area of high mass. You can see the uh, area of high mass where my finger is. So I start from the tip and I take off the mass to make that even higher so that it's an easy way, it's an easy mark to get at. Then we'll slip over here and take a little more off of this side so that the area that you need to get off, you see, is in line right here as a big lump. And that's what we're after right here. And off it comes and get rid of it. If you just attacked it head on, chances are the rock would win. Now, you can keep going. And we, we, it's always fun to get into contests to see who can thin it down. But after a while, you reach a point of diminishing returns. And we're about at that stage right now because the amount of mass that I'm going to get off to deliver this blow into the stone, if it's not exactly right on the money, the biface breaks. So, why ruin a good biface? We'll just quit right there. Now, you can pressure flake that, but in terms you don't have enough videotape to get through it because it, the pressure flaking takes a lot of work to get around. We'll video, we'll uh, pressure flake another one. So there's what the biface looks like. If you want to look at it, you can pass it around. Uh, these are classic biface reduction flakes, and you can tell a lot of information from the flakes. As a matter of fact, you tell far more, more about the debitage than you can about the finished product, uh, assuming that we stop at that stage and that's the end of it because that tells you what happens last, but this tells you what happened all the way through the process. We can manufacture those by a number of different techniques. They'll all look the same at the end, but the crap that lies on the ground is the important stuff, so that's the reason why we do the analysis of the debitage. As a matter of fact, we don't even diddle around that much with the, uh, with the end products. And so you, you can go to a site and do the analysis of the material never having an end product there and tell you pretty much what's going on at the site.